Jesus. Jesus, 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 he's all compassion, pure unbounded love thou art. Visit us with thy salvation. Enter every trembling heart. Jesus, Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly. Oh, love, that will not let me go. I rest my weary soul in thee. He's the Savior, Jesus, the Savior of my soul. He is Jesus. Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never. Glory to his name. Oh, dear viewers and listeners, brothers and sisters in Christ, if ever there was a time that we need that outpouring of the love and compassion of our Savior, our dear beloved Jesus Christ, it is now in these last days when men's hearts, as it says in the word of God, will fail them because of fear. When because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will wax cold. When there is already coming the great apostasy, has been for a number of years the great falling away when people are no longer ashamed or embarrassed to say I am an atheist there is no God but they boast of it when people are turning away to all sorts of diversions because they can't any longer face up to the real world and oh the, lo the Lord's heart Lord Jesus loves the little children and his heart is breaking in these last days at the slaughter of the innocents all over the world at the cull of the elderly, of the last of the wartime generation. At the stealing of the innocence of the children in all sorts of ways, through the media, through the schools, even sometimes through the churches. Dear, dear viewers and listeners, Praise you, Lord. We need the Praise Lord. The Lord People need the Lord. People need his love and oh. compassion as never before. You know that beautiful hymn, Lindsay, O love that wilt not let me go. And we know, viewers, that it's been a battle getting this program on today, mm. which always tells us it's going to be one of our best programs. Yes, it does. <laughs> Nearly always works that way. But you know, Lindsay's been battling with her voice, as those of you heard the live stream a few moments ago, and she started to express her heart, and I found some appropriate music. But these are peculiar days, Lindsay. They're days like we've never known before. The old norm will never be anymore. One lady who was a church member and trustee for many years, I understand has not been out of her house for a year in North Wales. Mm. And you think, my, you know, she was in the war zone in Sri Lanka. And a war didn't stop her. You know, minefields weren't going to stop her. But what's happened over the last year has stopped her. And so we're dealing with a new level of attack. But it's a time when the church grows. 
when we have our reliance on the Savior, our reliance fully, which is why, Lindsay, I've been led to talk about living out Romans 8. What does it mean in everyday mm. life? And is this we're going to deal with today? Lindsay and Pam will be back later with their hearts opening out once more. And we welcome you to our Pentecostal Holiness Church today. Lindsay, thank you. Oh, love that wilt not let me go. When we start moving by the power of the Spirit, we start moving into a place which is like no other. Peggy and Christine Smith of the Hebridean Revival refer to the portals of power, that is, those corridors we walk in high places. The heavenly places in Christ Jesus, as the Bible describes them. But these are places for people to walk who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And we are really going into the depths of the gospel today to bring an understanding of his word, not in a religious suppressive way, but in one which is liberating and freedom giving. One in which we can have the confidence, as the Bible describes it, where we can go about doing good, healing all oppressed of the devil, because God is with us. And as a ministry, we're not afraid to confess our weakness. Paul did this continuously. He said, it's when I'm weak, it's when I'm strong. The wonderful Bible College principal of Evangel Bible College, Birkenhead, J.D. Drysdale, wrote this. He said, Recently, when listening to a missionary who had passed through revival on the mission field, he made the remark that when speaking to the natives about other Christians, it was a common thing to have them ask the question, but is he a broken Christian? And it's brokenness we're going to talk about today. And that doesn't mean being some miserable guts who goes about with the appearance of righteousness, but underneath these clothes is a den of iniquity, which is what Lindsay and I have found in what is called church in Great Britain. We met a lovely lady at the View, Port William, yesterday who had the joy of the Lord as her strength and none of the religious spirit was going to hold her back. She was going to be joyful and her heart was to bring joy to others and bring happiness to others. Surely this has to be the Christian walk. Surely this has to be the walk which we have been called to follow the Saviour. J.D. Drysdale declared, the need of the hour is broken Christians. I want to see brokenness preach more and more. We've had too much of the grand Christianity. Too much of the ministers who think more of themselves than what they have ever thought of Christ. Too much of the outward show. We want more of the inner being coming out from the hearts of believers. That inner being declaring that in ourselves we are nothing. John 5.30 But in Christ we can do all things. J.D. Drysdale asked the question. But how does this brokenness come about? First, he declared, by a revelation of God's holiness. That is not the religious spirit. That is not, oh Lord, should I say it? Yes, you call me to say it. And I say this with every compassion and with every heart. It's not the holiness 
we witnessed when attending a Brethren Assembly meeting in Port William about two years ago, where we witnessed an outer show of holiness, but we saw within the people a suppression of unrighteousness where a preacher needs to come and bring the devils out in the open and set the people free. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. The Bible declares greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. The Bible declares not to look at the outward appearance. The Bible declares the danger of observing holy days and having within you a torrent of unrighteousness. And so what we have today is a church that needs to come alive to true holiness, true brokenness, true understanding, and true power, true anointing. Secondly, declared J.D. Drysdale, having declared the first revelation, that is of God's holiness, the second is, the revelation of our own unholiness. True holiness people recognize that in their emotion realm there can be unholiness. True holiness people are not afraid to admit their weakness. True holiness people will go amongst fellow believers and confess their faults, knowing this is the scriptural way to bring healing. True holiness feeling, true holiness revelation brings about the removal of human feeling and anxiety. declared Drysdale the language of our text which is from Job chapter 13 1 through to 6 summarized by Drysdale into just one verse I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes and that is the way of the cross but this is not the way of the religious spirit which has its own self-righteousness, of its own oughtness, of suppression of sin rather than confession of it. Suppression leads to the greatest sin. Drysdale declared that in fact we might say that Job was put on show by God to demonstrate that when a man really loves God, he is willing to suffer the loss of all things and still keep his integrity. I believe the way of the cross is a loss of our earthly things. Jesus said to build not treasures on earth, but instead invest in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said to give all to follow him. Yet how many Christians can we get together with who have given their all, but instead we find Lindsay and I over the years that beneath it all there's the idols of their own career, beneath it all there is the idols of their observance of religion, yet we see little of those who demonstrate the power, who trust God so much they are willing to move out of their comfort zone as Abraham moved out from his eminent position in the air of the Chaldees to go into God's unknown. I want to be with the real Christians who are broken. Declared Drysdale, Satan was permitted to test Job in every conceivable way. 
He lost his family. He lost his wealth. He lost his position. He lost his health. His wife besought him to curse God and die. All around us are those who call us to step back on the world's road. All around us there are those saying the road you have taken is too hard. All around us there are those saying that we should honour the establishment way. But God says no. The cross is the way of persecution. The cross is the, way, is the place where we pick up our own cross to follow him. I'm led today into Romans 8. What a magnificent chapter this is. It talks of this spiritual road which is so great. It talks of not moving by the flesh but of the spirit. It talks of the suffering that we endure so as we can move in this heavenly place in Christ Jesus. It brings us to realization. <coughs> that none of us can pray as we ought. It brings us the realization of the Spirit and the Son interceding to the Father. It brings us the understanding that the carnality of this world is not for the Christian. It brings us the understanding that God is not to be placed on top of our ordinary lives but to be completely him. Therefore, declared the apostle to the Romans, there is no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And this means in all things. God spoke to me over my personal appearance and the personal appearance of Lindsay. He said, I'm watching you young again. He told me that he's not into his body going old. He showed me the scriptures. I shall renew your youth with wings like eagles. And we will soar, saith the Lord. And age is to be no barrier to this because we are eternal beings. That is, those who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit, walking even on this earth in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, not moved by what we see all around us, not moved by the feelings of our emotions, but moved by the Spirit of God moving in power and glory in his book God's Standard Duncan Campbell declared the story of the church of God down through the ages is one of conflict but also of conquest they overcame him he declared by the blood of the lamb yet in our local cack here in Whitton, having attended this den of iniquity for seven months, we heard not of the blood, only that we are sinners saved by grace. This is not being a Christian, for a Christian is one who has been to the cross, repented of his sin, and allowed the blood of Christ to cleanse us from all in righteousness. That is why we are here at Whitton, Whithorn, not only on a international basis but also locally to bring to the people the true gospel of Jesus Christ of him died and him risen again not only this that we being born again washed by the blood should be risen together with him to walk the heavenly places in Christ Jesus I refer you to Romans chapter 6 they overcame him, declared Campbell, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They loved not their lives unto the death. 
they wear the clothes of this world, but give an appearance of righteousness. But beneath it all, there's the selfish loss of building up treasures on earth. John saw in the blood of the Lamb, continues Campbell, the eternal sign of Satan's defeat. One wonderful tradesperson working on our house here at Witton, our mission house, declared to us that Satan is still fighting. And I said to him, yes, but defeated. Still fighting, but defeated. Hallelujah. What a message that is. Quoting Gordon B. Watts. The finished work of Christ is our plea before the throne. And our weapon against the enemy. Our right it is in Christ. To ask God to bear witness on the battlefield of life. To the power of the blood. And the effectiveness of the cross against Satan and all his forces. He will not disappoint us. He cannot fail. Our victory is secure. And it's here in Romans 8. For those who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit. To conclude Campbell's chapter. Entitled the door of vision. He said this. Here let me stress one truth. The proof of reality is obedience to the known will of God. Some years ago now, I was in Engedi Kibbutz, a house of David, literally. I wasn't the only David to have walked these shores. That time I knew not the inner witness as I should have done. And as we read through Romans 8, we'll read of being led by the Spirit of God. Those who are led that way are the sons of God. The Bible declaring the Spirit of man is the candle of the Lord and our everyday walk is led by the inner self. But on this occasion, I was not in that place. But God had a message for me. He was to bring me my wife, Lindsay, else I didn't know us at that time. A lady who I've loved every part of her from beginning to end now for decades. And she was brought to me by the Lord Jesus. And God spoke to me at Engedi Kibbutz, I guess now about 40 years ago. He said, when you get back to Wales, you will be offered a job in a far off place. Take it. Immediately I returned. My dear brother in the Lord, Finley MacLeod of Inverness, had retired from his position in the company in which I worked at that time. He was truly born again, washed by the blood. And he told me of all his customers, many of whom, like him, were saved people. You see, when I say in the past I was a sales representative, I then became a sales manager. Some people think this is like a normal sales job. It wasn't. The Lord had set this up for me to walk the highlands and islands of Scotland. A place I love to this day. A place to which I've been called back, albeit now in the southwest corner of Scotland. 
I still see this nation as my home. I moved to Inverness not knowing anyone. Having been called back to the Savior, having been born again at an early age, and now restored back into communion with God, I thought I needed to attend a local church. And I attended the Barn Church of Scotland in Culloden and waited around in the Hall of Friendship where no one spoke to me for about three months. But I persevered. And eventually a lovely minister came to see me called Peter Taylor. And he was a lovely man of God. To cut a long story short, in Scotland I was to meet my wife-to-be, Lindsay, where we courted, walking the highlands of Scotland, walking around the locks of Scotland, having meals out together. She paying for the dinners and I paying for the lunches. <laughs> she hasn't forgotten to this very day. <laughs> but something was drawing us. She'd been led to the Lord in South Africa. A lady called Hester was called by the Spirit of God to go on a tourist trail where she found Lindsay and brought her to the Lord Jesus. And so our marriage was brought together by the Spirit of God moving in a peculiar way. And I believe we've had the happiest marriage anybody could ever have. Do you know why there is no secrets between us? We love each other just as much today as we did all those decades ago. Because the Spirit of the Lord brought this about. No man could bring this about. The Lord had it in his plan. And her father, William Anderson, a brave Kirk elder <laughs> of the Church of Scotland parish of Blair Athol, whilst dying, he said to me, look after them both. Lindsay and his wife. He was giving me his mantle. All hell came against Lindsay and I over many years. Our story being too long to tell. But though we walked through the valley of the shadow of death on many occasions, we felt no evil. Why? For his rod his staff, they comforted us. And goodness and mercy have followed us all the days of our life. You know, dear Anne, who we met yesterday, notice at the start of our program a picture of Lindsay and I taken about 30 years ago. A picture I took into our her dresses at Port William. I said, can you make us look like this again? Well, you might think it was going to be a miracle, and in fact it was. Because the Spirit of the Lord called me to do this. And he spoke to me over my appearance and talking about having lively clerical wear. And, I, and he spoke to me. He says, you can wear jeans. You know, I say, no, Lord, I'm too old to wear jeans. He said, oh, no, you're not. I'm renewing your youth with wings like eagles. But I want you to wear clerical jeans. Now, those of the religious spirit will go mad over what I've got to say. But God called you whited sepulchres. 
You see, those led by the Spirit of God are not of the religious spirit of conformity, but those who hear from the Spirit of the Lord and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So I said to our dear hairdressers, Ali Bali and Margaret, can you make us look like this? And he looked at me. But I stood firm. And I believe they've done a brilliant job. And we've got a competition running between us. As our mission house has just been beautifully painted. And people are deciding which is more beautiful, Lindsay Eye or the mission house. I won't tell you the score up to now. <laughs> but I'll tell you this he spoke to me about having jeans so I thought of getting a cheap pair of jeans oh no he said when you were a teenager what jeans were you wearing then I said Lord Levi's you see I was to wear clerical jeans the jeans of the Levites I said, but Lord, they cost about three times more to have a label than ordinary jeans. He says, I'm calling you to have the best. The you see what happens when we give up everything to him. He gives us everything to us. And I said, Lord, what else am I to have? And he pointed me to a belt. In fact, Lindsay, you can go up and perhaps get this belt now. I can show the people. It's upstairs on the chair by our bed. And it's over the chair. And the Lord not only called me, to have jeans to his glory. But also have, have you noticed the cowboys have fancy belts? And I'm going to show you a belt in just a moment. You see, I'm teaching about how to be led by the Spirit of God. And I'm teaching with the objective of telling you this has nothing to do with religious suppression. It is just the opposite. Natalie Rains is a Baptist lady who's online every Sunday night on Facebook and um, YouTube. And she has a lovely husband called Josh. They're young in their marriage and have a beautiful music ministry. And they say that in their church, they talk of Sunday best. of dressing up in their best gear, honoring God. And this was the way in the 1950s and 60s in the mission hall where I was brought up, we all looked our best on a Sunday. And it's as if this has been forgotten. And the Lord was taking me back to my youth and into my teenage years. And he was saying to me, I want you looking the brightest guy around. And it's amazing. Since following the Lord, the number of people who've come up and noticed the change of appearance of Lindsay and I and of the mission house here. And being led by the Spirit it's just amazing. And I've been led to wear jeans which are the uniform, or originally were, was the uniform of cowboys. So I'm going to show you something. On the belt, the Lord told me to buy. Do you see that? It's off the cross. 
You know, in the old days, there was a record in the 1950s by Wink Martindale. It was called Deck of Cards. Of how God used the Deck of Cards to bring people to Christ. The religious people would condemn the playing of cards. But the story of a soldier with his deck brought many people to Jesus Christ in the 1950s. And as I show you this depiction of a cowboy who has come off his horse to kneel at the cross to accept Jesus, the Lord says, I'm giving you clerical wear, which I can use to bring people to Christ. You see, it started with the genes, but has continued with the belt. Who is the belt? The Bible declares the belt to be Jesus, the belt of truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You see, I'm teaching you how to be led by the Spirit, not by the Amen. false religious spirit. Yes. Amen. I cry. I see so many people deceived. They have not learned of these great things. Campbell concluding his passage on the door of vision. He said it was Christ himself who declared that entrance to the heavenly kingdom. Is denied to those who merely say Lord, Lord. And is only awarded to those who do the will of the Father. It is only those who are doers of the word who will enter the kingdom of heaven. The path of his will may be narrow, declared Campbell, but it is never obscure. As the Lord never leaves us in doubt as to his requirements. Declaring the throne vision while it reveals the measure of our responsibility and possibility. Also the reveals the measure of our resources. And so we begin this passage in Romans with this call to walk not after the flesh. You see man is a tripartite being. Body, soul, and spirit. The soulish realm being the realm of the emotions. How many of you are moved by your emotions rather than by the spirits of God? You see, we find those with the religious spirit have issues underneath which are not dealt with that comes out in unexpected ways. At one meeting where the ethos was that women were to be quiet rather than be part of the ministry. The Spirit of God led me to the pastor's wife and said, you are to lead this ministry. Of course, this was totally against their ethos, their ethos at that time being of the religious spirit. You see, the Bible declares sons and daughters shall prophesy. The Bible declares there's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. With the Bible not giving any gender preference. The gender preference being in Timothy in relation to local church ministry, in relation to deacons and elders and so forth, but not to apostles of 
prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. There being many prophetesses being seen throughout the whole of the Bible as the foundations of ministry both in the Old and in the New Testament. Yet the religious spirit, using scripture out of context, loses the, uses scripture in a manner which binds rather than sets free. You see, those who are led by the spirits of God, those who become the sons of God, are not carnally minded, which is death, but spiritually minded, which is life and peace. And God leads us into righteousness and freedom rather than suppression. He spoke to me. I want to talk to you about your aftershave balm. He said, what did you used to buy? I said, Thalgo. Now that is about 35 pounds for a small tube. I said, Lord, I can't. We've been battling for money. He says, what have I called you to have? You see, when we start hearing from God, we start moving in freedom rather than religious condemnation. Do you not remember the religious people when the woman bathed my feet in the finest perfume? They were outraged. But Lord, this, this, this costs so much a bottle, they said. That's what I said to the Lord about my Thalgo balm. Has the religious spirit affected your life? Are you suppressed rather than free in Christ Jesus? But I can't afford it, Lord. He says, I can. I am your provider. Trust me. So I bought my Thalga. And those of you near me who all know how wonderfully smelling I am. You see, he has come to set us free, not bind us in the religious clothes of suppression. I spoke to the pastor's wife by the Spirit of God. I said, you are to lead this ministry. The word was rejected. The ministry lost. The pastor found in the back of the church minibus. You know, you are called to hear by the Spirit, not by your religious observance. You are called to read the Scripture in Revelation, in the context of the whole of Scripture, not narrow passages which place us under condemnation, mm -hmm. but by an understanding of the context, an understanding of how the Scripture was originally given. For the Lord will reveal his word as a sword to set us free. Verse 13. If ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, we may also be glorified together I'm telling you today that Jesus Christ is alive today he does not want you to be under the bondage of the Pharisees and there are many of them but want you to be free to hear yourself from the Lord 
as Lindsay heard from the Lord to come to the cross and receive him. That led her to come and meet me at Dunkel Bridge where we first met and their parents set the police on us because we were so late out at night that they wondered where we were and we had a policeman dr driving up and down looking in our window at Dunkeld and we were simply just talking together, getting to know each other. Now I hear in the audible voice of God, my life would have been one of destruction had I not obeyed God as your life will be also. For hearing the voice of the Spirit is vital. And coming out of comfort zones, as Abraham left the Ur of the Chaldees, is absolutely vital. And being able to walk those windows of power, those portals of power, the, the understanding being it's the Spirit and the Son interceding to the Father, verse 26 the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. The Greek word astenea means human weakness. That is why we have a fellowship here where we can be open with each other. The Bible says we know not what we should pray for. Yet people are all the time asking for prayer. Commonly I've said, but I do not know how to pray. But I know someone who does. For the Spirit itself, with groanings which cannot be uttered, searches the hearts. Knoweth the mind of the Spirit, maketh intercession. What is that intercession, O Lord? What is the Spirit and the Son interceding to the Father for me? What a question! Instead of praying by the natural mind, polluted by the God of this world, how about prayer from the heart? For with the heart we believe unto righteousness. What about allowing the spirit within us to renew our mind? Paul writing to the Romans this time in 12.2 Be not conformed to this world. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may know may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do you know the perfect will of God in your life? I know it. Led me to the most wonderful wife a man could ever have. We used to sing in our mission hall in the 1950s, Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way thou art the potter i am the clay are you allowing this potter to mold us into his image are we allowing our soulless nature our minds to be purified you know lindsay and i have not one secret between us i lie in bed and say lord What about my feelings towards Lindsay? I'm talking intimate feelings. I even took that to him. Doesn't the Bible say in all things he must have the preeminence? The religious will not even talk about that issue. They suppress it down. An area not to be talked about. Those joined to the Lord are one spirit. Ephesians 5 says, We lead parents to be joined to one wife in the most intimate manner. The Bible says we are married to him, Jeremiah 3.14. Now intimacy is a total giving. The two become one flesh. Such intimacy. Rarely talked about in the religious church. I took in my feelings. 
And as we take him our feelings from the emotional realm, you know what he does? Just as Hercules brought together two rivers to flush out an oxen shed, dirty of 30 years age, I believe. So his water flows through our minds and purifies our minds in line with his spirit. This is the renewing of the mind. And our intimacy has become closer and closer in age, even greater than in our youth. Doesn't the Bible say he shall renew our youth? Whether we've reached the level of faith of Abraham and Sarah, I do not know. But what I will say is this. There is intimacy. There is love of agape, filio, and eros in our marriage. The reason being we were brought together by the Spirit of God and we love each other with an intensity which is only of God. For even in our most intimate feelings, we give him the preeminence. That the righteousness of the law, verse 4, chapter 8, might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. You know, there have been many who've been called to join us at Whithorn. And they tell us all sorts of reasons why they can't come. I need to be near my grandchildren. I need to this, I need to that. Yet God has brought about a mission house here. So great we can stand against the God of this world who is bringing all kinds of suppressions in the build-up to the time of the Antichrist. Andrew Murray, in his book, Absolute Surrender, declared this, Do not ask God only for power. Many a Christian has his own plan of working. But God must send the power. The man works in his own will. And God must give the grace. The one reason why God only gives so little grace and so little success. But let us all take our place before God and say. What is done in the will of God. The strength of God will not be withheld from it what is done in the will of God will have the mighty blessing of God have thine own way Lord have thine own way thou art the potter I am the clay Lindsay will you bring the hymn book together um, it's just just by the door there. You'll see them on the right-hand side. Give one to Pam and take one for yourself. And let's sing that lovely hymn. Have thine own way, Lord. Can you sing this with us? It's in the section of consecration hymns. Have thine own way. Oh, praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. We thank you that Jesus is alive today and that greater is he who is in us. It's hymn 31 in our hymn book. Greater is he who is in us than he that's in the world. And as the Spirit moves upon you now, I believe there are those being called to come out of their comfort zones. 
and to accept Christ truly as their Lord and Saviour. Now as we sing this hymn, will you come to the front? That can be to the front of your computer, spiritually thinking. The old days it would be a front of a mission hall. Lindsay, you can come and join me here. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now. As in thy presence, humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Wounded and weary, help me, I pray. Power, all oh power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Saviour divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold all my being, absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit, till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter. I am the clay. Mow me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still. Father, we come today in the name of Jesus. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own mm. way. Yes. Lord, we pray by thy Spirit for those being called into ministry as is everyone, really. The Bible says, go into the whole world and preach the gospel. Make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Have thine own way, Lord. Will you come to the front today and say, have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Let it be consecrated, Lord, Lord to Thee. Take my moments and my days. Let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands. Let them move in the impulse of Thy love. Oh, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Lindsay talked a lot about you in this. Uh, I'm really blessed. <laughs> Every day. She's a fiery Scot, you know. <laughs> you know. I'm not always easy, but dad, he's, he's what well, God put this. us together, you know, and it's such a this. blessing. Her dad knew what yeah. she was. 
You, if you see what she was doing to Scott's <laughs> Kirk, there's pictures of her as a babber, you know, and uh, we've got a <laughs> two-year-old grandson who looks just like her, you know, who Brian Mason here calls Buster. <laughs> and uh, he's known as the biter of the nursery. You know? <laughs> and, um, you know, I think the redemption, understanding of the cross hasn't reached him yet, no. you know, his righteousness. Uh, you know, he, he's... In, in a sense, not reach the age of understanding. Mm. But, you know, every one of us has had to come to the cross. Yes. And every one of us, I bet you were a biter when you were about to. It probably was. <laughs> it's a remember. generational biting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we never regret it, Lindsay, do we? No. Such joy. Such joy, trust and obey. Yeah, and no and there's other no way. There's no other way to be happy, happy. in Jesus. His old and we never shall prove the delights of His love yeah. until all on the altar we look great old Him. Yeah. Mm. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. And let it be. Consecrated Lord, to thee, take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands, let them move at the impulse mm -hmm. of thy love. Take my feet and let them be. Swift and beautiful. Really? And the final part. Take my love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take myself, and it shall be ever only all for thee. You know, we live in a nation which turned away from God. Mm. The queen making promises to uphold God's law. And you know, Lindsay, as we come to a final presentation and Pam is coming up to share as well, I believe there's going to be a mighty move of God's spirit. And people will yes. see the religious spirit for what it is. Because if you know Jesus, he will set you free. Remember that song? I'm so glad Jesus, Jesus set, set me free. free. I'm so glad Jesus, Jesus set, set me free. free. I'm so glad that, that Jesus, Jesus set me free. free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound. But Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound. But Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound. But Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm shouting victory. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm shouting victory. I'm on my way to heaven. I'm shouting victory. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus set me free. Hallelujah. Pamela, you can come up and share with Lindsay. I'll go over there mm -hmm. and literally raise you up because Pam's <laughs> about half our size or three quarters or whatever. And I need to raise the picture up for you to see her properly. So here's Pam. Here she is. And we, we love you. Come on, Pam. Come and see. Come, on, come and see Pamela. Here she, she is. is. Look, look, she's just coming over the pulpit. She'll be risen up in just hey. a moment. You share with us, Pam. Hello, everybody. That was a very moving message today. And all about walking with God in, in the spirit and being open to what he's telling us. And we live in a world where we're bombarded by all sorts of things and we need to take that time to just sit still. What's the word, um, what does it be? Still and know that I am God. Just to sit still so we can hear him. It's all right us talking to him, but we need to sit still so we can hear his voice as well. And then when we hear his voice, 
as David was saying, um, that you know God gave him instructions about what to wear and what hairstyle to have and all that stuff. <laughs> but I know that God spoke to me about a year and a half to two years ago and was telling me to come here and I'm, I'm so glad that I came here and it's about trusting him and being obedient as well and you know there was that song trust and obey so we all have to do that and the bible tells us how to do that like David was talking about today from Romans 8 so it's all about we just need to give him you know the preeminence give him more time in our lives as I say, I know that we're bombarded by this, that and the other, but we need to make that time just because he blesses us. You know, I feel so blessed to be here and I'm truly grateful that he, he brought me here. I really am because I've not, I'm not only drawing closer and closer to, to him, but, you know, he's given me such a wonderful family to live with and I see them as my my family he, you know he knew what we all he knew what I needed and he's blessed me as I say with this wonderful family here and I'm truly grateful that he called me here to study and to be with them so it's trusting and obeying and if if he's calling you don't be afraid because if he wants you to do something, if you obey him, he's, he's, he's always there with you. He never leaves. He's always by our side. And, you know, he's promised so many things that he will do for us if we trust and obey him. And he's a God that never changes. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. So you can trust him. So as I said, I'm, I'm just so blessed to be here. And I know that you will be too if you just be courageous. He asks, he calls us to be courageous. So just be courageous and follow your heart because if in your heart God is asking you to come here, to draw close to him and come here, then that's him talking to you. So that's my little message for today. And uh, thank you for listening to me message and we are really really glad that Pamela did listen to God and we were so glad as well that she's here because there's such a blessing in trusting and obeying and you know what seems a comfort zone isn't always a comfort zone it can be the most dangerous place in the world if you're not in the will of God honestly I've got a testimony if I may quickly share that um, that what Palma says is so true it does need courage it needs taking time to listen to God and hear his voice and to obey but I have a, a, a testimony about this even way back in 1998 and believe me things have got a whole lot more dangerous since then I think we all know this if we're awake in 1998 I remember this so well I was still teaching I was teaching in Chester and we were called to go um, as, as a group, that's David, myself, our, our two boys and, and the team that we had with us. We were called to go to a conference in Sri Lanka that Easter and I had to ask for a, two, a few days off school to go. And everybody was, God provided a way to do this. But everybody, it's got all the headmistresses, oh, you shouldn't go there. It's a war zone because they'd had a civil war for many years in Sri Lanka as you know, which was still going on. Oh, it's so dangerous, you shouldn't go there, you know, be careful and all. Well, you know, because it was God's will for us to go to Sri Lanka, war zone or no war zone, we were so blessed. It was like moving by the Spirit of God. It was like the New Testament all over again, the Book of Acts all over again. You know, there were people saved, healed, delivered, all this wonderful. And we were just so happy and so blessed in what seemed the danger zone because we're in the center of God's will. And after these, this conference, at the, the beginning of the next term, went back to school again. And I found that all hell had let loose in what was supposedly a comfort zone. The headmistress had nearly drowned on a narrow boat on a canal and was all bandaged up with frostbite. And 
Somebody else had, and the staff had suddenly, who seemed perfectly healthy, had dropped dead. And there were all sorts of troubles on this school trip where these kids were actually bringing drugs into Holland instead of taking them out. And, you know, it was just like, you see, this, the comfort zone, this bubble can easily collapse and burst. Uh, that's the word, Pam. That's the word, burst. You know, and you can find what seems to be dangerous or seems to be a crazy thing to do as other people see it. But God makes a way. And Abraham proved that. You know, so many others right from then on, right through the Bible, especially in Hebrews 11, the book of faith gives you so many instances of people who've left their comfort zones to obey the voice of God. It's such liberty in it because where the Spirit of the Lord is, as David said earlier, there is liberty. So just enjoy it. Trust and obey. Amen and amen. Are we finished? We're finished. Praise the Lord. <laughs> So just have the joy of the Lord today and listen to him. And don't look at outward appearances. Because the Lord doesn't. He looks on the heart. And he'll speak to your heart today. So obey before it's too late. Whatever he's telling you to do. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. He will strengthen. That's right. Hey. So bye-bye. God bless you. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed. I'm sure you've enjoyed. And, and listen, listen to the voice of God, not just today, but every day. In Jesus' name, bye for now. God bless you. Listen to the words of that song. Mark 11, 23. And right next door. Redemption One that comes 
covers every need Perfectly he's restored our fellowship With no sense of guilt or memory I'm a new creation I'm a brand new man Old things are passed away I am born again I'm a brand new man I'm a new creation I'm a brand new man Old things are passed away I am born again More than a conqueror That's who I am I'm a new creation